Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I am surrounded by power stations here on the table, and that's because we are looking at the Bluetti Charger One. This is their new alternator charger, and what's so cool about this product is that this has an adjustable output voltage. I have not seen any other product with this feature, meaning that this is compatible with basically any power station. This will charge all of your Bluetti power stations. It will also charge all the other brands Pecron, EcoFlow, Anchor, Energizer, you name it, it's compatible with this device. This has an output voltage of 15 all the way up to 56 volts, fully adjustable. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how it works. Now taking a closer look at this, this side is designed to connect up to a 12 or 24 volt battery, whether that's in your vehicle, like your starter battery, or a standalone DIY expansion battery, whatever type of battery, you connect it up to this side. And then this side, you have these MC4 connections to connect up to your power station. What this does is it takes the low voltage of your battery and boosts it up to a higher voltage so your power station can charge faster. Now the main advantage to having a product like this is that you no longer have to rely on solar to fast charge your power stations. You now have the ability to connect up to a battery and get over 500 watts of input. So let's say you're in an overlanding setup or a van life scenario, or you're boondocking with your RV and the sun is no longer shining, say it's cloudy, stormy, or it's at night, well now you have a way to charge it up when your batteries get low. And also for a home backup scenario, if you have a bunch of batteries sitting around, connect this up and boost the charging speed so you can charge them much faster. So in my first test, I wanna show you how easy it is to use the Blue Eddy Charger One on different sized Blue Eddy power stations. We have the Blue Eddy AC2A, the AC180 and the AC200L, and this is compatible with each one of these. Now the first step is to connect to the Charger One in the Blue Eddy Smart App, and what you'll do is select the charging voltage and you're gonna search for the power station that you wanna charge. So I'm gonna select the AC2A, click OK, and it will update the voltage output, and then you just click the charging button to turn it on, and then you just have to connect it up to your power station. Now connecting it up to the power station is really easy. You use the included solar charging cable for the Blue Eddy power station. This one has an XT60 port and MC4. It connects right up, plugs in, and you'll see that on the smart app here, we are getting 28 volts output, which is the peak voltage of the AC2A. So it is maxing this out. You can get 200 watts max and we're sitting at 198 watts. So this is working perfect for the AC2A. Now I'm curious about the efficiency of the Charger One at this charging speed, right around 200 watts. So I've looked at the Smart App for the SFK. We're pulling around 213 watts from that battery and we're seeing 198 watts going into the power station. So it's right around 92.9% .9 efficient at this charging speed. So in the next test, I wanna take the Charger One and charge up the Blue Eddy AC180. Now this one has a different input voltage requirement the charging port takes up to 60 volts. So what we do is we open up the Smart App, select the Blue Eddy AC180, and you'll see that it actually updates the voltage from 28 volts to 56 volts. So we should see quite a bit faster charging. So now I'm going to use the stock solar charging cable for the Blue Eddy and plug it into this port here. Let's see how much power we get. So with the Charger One connected to the Blue Eddy AC180, we are charging at 500 watts. Now remember, that is the peak input for the AC180, so we are maxing out that input. It's pretty cool. Now because we're charging at 500 watts, the fans on this unit have kicked up to a higher speed. Let's check to see how loud they are. So right around 43 decibels, not bad at all. So in the next test, we are gonna take the Charger One and connect it up to the larger AC200L. Now the difference between this power station and the AC180 is the fact that this one allows 1200 watts input instead of 500 watts. So we are gonna see a little bit more power. I'm just curious to see how much difference. For example, this is rated at 56 volts output and 10 amps. So that's right around 560 watts. Now what I've done is I've gone in the Smart App and selected the Blue Eddy AC200L you can see the output voltage is still the same at 56 volts because that's just the peak output. So let's connect it up and see how much we get. So if you take a closer look at the screen here, we are getting 568 to 569 watts charging input. So we did get a little bit more power. This is definitely the peak amount that you'd see from this charger. Now looking at the efficiency numbers, my SFK battery is showing 613 watts 
and the Blue Eddy is doing 568 about, so that's 92.6% efficient. So really good efficiency numbers even at this peak output. Now because we're charging at a little bit higher speeds, the fans are a little bit louder than our previous test, so let's see how loud they are. Wow guys, I really like this product because of the adjustable voltage. This device will basically work on any power station, especially any power station that Blue Eddy has released. It's super easy to connect up. You just have the MC4 adapters. So as long as you have the solar charging cable for your power station, it connects right in and starts charging. The only thing that you have to do is adjust the voltage and that's easy through the smart app. But let's see how this works with a few other power stations. So here on the table, I have three different brands of power stations that are compatible with the Blue Eddy Charger 1. We have the Anchor C1000, the Pecoron E1500 LFP, and the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. Let's connect this up to each one and see what wattage we get. Now for all three of these tests, I have the Charger 1 set to 56 volts output, and each of the power stations are using their own default solar charging cable. So the Anchor has an XT60 to MC4, so let's go ahead and plug this in, and it will start charging. So on the Anchor C1000, we are charging around 567 watts to 571 watts. So it does work well on this model too. So let's connect it up to the Pecoron E1500 LFP. This has an aviation port to MC4. So we should just have to plug these in and it will start charging. So if we look closer at the Pecoron screen, we are charging at around the same amount of power, 561 watts. So very decent input when we're charging with the Pecron power station as well. Now for the final demo, we'll be connecting it up to the Delta 3 Plus. So let's connect this up to the charging cables and we'll see what happens. So just after a minute or so, we are already charging at 500 watts input. Now, if you remember, the back of this power station actually has two charging ports. Each one's good for 500 watts. So technically you could charge at a thousand watts if you had two of these connected to the Delta 3 Plus. Well, now that I've demonstrated that this is compatible with a bunch of different power stations due to its adjustable output voltage, I wanna show you why this is important and demonstrate how it functions. So on the input side of this converter, it's designed to be connected up to a 12 or 24 volt battery. And in this case, I'm using a large 12 volt battery. If we look over here at my clamp meter, we are pulling 43.6 amps, which is a lot of amperage. Now what this does is it takes the low voltage, high amperage and boosts it up to high voltage, low amperage. Power stations do not like to charge with high amperage. They prefer high voltage. Usually the larger the power station, the higher the voltage it likes to charge at. For example, this one takes up to 60 volts input. So it's going to charge the fastest as we get up to that 60 volts. So this takes the low volts, boosts it up to high volts, so we can charge much faster. If you're familiar with any power station like this, if you connected it up to this 12 volt battery, it would charge around 100 watts. But because we're using this boost converter, we're able to charge it up to five times faster at 500 watts. It's pretty cool. Now I mentioned earlier that this can pull up to 50 amps from your battery if you're charging around 500 to 550 watts. Now why is that important to mention that? Well, if you have a small vehicle, like a car or even a small SUV, the alternator might not be rated for much power output. So you wanna make sure that you're not pulling too much power. If you look in your user manual for your vehicle, usually it'll state the rated amperage for your alternator. But how do you adjust the charging speed so it doesn't pull as much power? Now, if you look at the Smart App, you have the ability to adjust the charging voltage. You're gonna scroll down till it says custom and click okay. And then you're going to select pro mode. Click accept the warning there. It's just saying that this is a high voltage. It might damage some power stations. So if you want to charge slower, drop it down to maybe 30 volts. So then it's going to go to 30 volts. And you can see the overview there. So with the output voltage set to 30 volts, you can see we're charging slower at 235 watts here. And we are only pulling 19.7 amps from the battery. So if you have a smaller vehicle or your alternator is not rated for a bunch of power, just turn down the voltage. It will charge your power station slower and you won't pull as much amperage from that alternator. So if you have a large truck, don't worry about this. You can set this to full charging speed, but if you do have a small alternator, it's important to think about this. Now I want to take a second to talk about pricing and different bundles that are available for this device. 
So if you look on Blue Eddie's website, the Charger one comes in at an MSRP of $399, and there are a couple different bundle options. You can pick up the base unit. It's currently on sale for $269 at the time of me filming this video. And you can pick up this unit with the wiring harness that connects up to your battery for $329. Now just be aware, this unit here is the base unit. It does not come with this pigtail or connector. This is my connector. I added this on, but it does come with the Solar MC4 connections. Let me break down what comes in the box. Now I've laid out everything here on the table that comes in the box. So you get the charger, you get these MC4 pigtails for connecting up to your power station. Now those connect under this flap right here. There are two set screws down in here and they give you a few extras right here in case you need them. They provide some screws for surface mounting it and to build up your own wiring harness for the input side, you have these ring terminals which are made for six gauge wire. And then also they provide four of these. I've already used two of them, but these go over the six gauge wire and in the back of the device. So this is where your six gauge wire connects in. You have a positive and negative, and this is the set screw location where it tightens down on those terminals. And then these will not come out. So I'm using six gauge wire with an Anderson SB50 connection. Now, because I have the base unit and Blue Eddie did not send me the wiring harness, I did have to come up with my own wiring setup. So I'll break that down really quick. I will include some of these parts down in the video description if you're interested in kind of coming up with something like this. Now I opted to use four gauge wire for both of these and I used a small uh, six gauge wire pigtail here. Let me explain why. So when you have 50 amps going through six gauge wire, you will get a little bit of voltage drop. But if you have four gauge wire, you won't see nearly as much voltage drop. So that's why I opted to do um, these pigtails here. So. This is four gauge wire, it's like two feet long with an Anderson SB50 connection here. And then right here, I have kind of a temporary setup. This is um, four gauge wire, it's probably like eight feet long, alligator clamps to an SB50. Now both of these allow me to plug directly into this because I have the SB50 here. So four gauge wire, four gauge wire, and just a really short run of six gauge wire. Now this is definitely a testing temporary setup um, if you are going to permanently mount this, I would recommend using um, the proper fuse size. If you're going to be using four gauge wire, you can have an 80 amp fuse or DC breaker. And if you're using six gauge wire, you need to have a 60 amp DC breaker or fuse. Like I said, I'll include some recommendations down in the video description. Now you guys will have to let me know if you found this video helpful, basically explaining how the Blue Eddy Charger One alternator charger works and why it's unique. I absolutely love the adjustable output voltage. Now we've seen a lot of these products in the last year or so. For example, the first one that I tested was the Pecron car charger. This is a 500 watt device. It's really simple and affordable, but it does work. Here we have the eTaker F1000. This allows dual inputs, but it does have a fixed voltage. So this will not work with small power stations. And of course we have the EcoFlow alternator charger. Now I have not done a video on this one, because there are just billions of videos out there already on it. But if you guys really want me to do a video, make sure you comment down below and uh, you know, think about it. Think about making a video about this one. But what do you guys think about me making a video comparing all of these? If that's what you'd like to see, make sure you throw a comment down below. Thank you guys for sticking around. Please smash the thumbs up button if you like the video. I will recommend a couple other videos that you can check out if you're interested in this type of content. If you guys have any specific questions about wiring this or using any of these, make sure you reach out to my Ask Me consulting service. I'll include the link to that down in the video description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.